Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to draw a force diagram. So listed here are the types of forces that we'll encounter over the course of this unit. I'm not going to sit here and read over the definitions of all of the forces because we already did that in class. But if you want, you can pause and copy these down if you didn't get them in your notes. But in short, we've got the force of gravity the normal force, the force of tension, the force of static friction, as well as the force of kinetic friction. So to me, a complete force diagram can be obtained if you follow through with these four steps. So the first step, in short, is to draw a dotted line around the thing that we're interested in, which is the system. The second thing to do is then draw a dot to the side. This is going to represent our system. And then after that, we identify the forces acting on the objects in the system. And we're going to draw an arrow for each force that we find using the appropriate label, length, and direction. And then finally, we're going to complete our label by using on by notation to let us know what the force is acting on and what's doing the force. Okay, so here we have a CrossFit athlete pushing a weight sled that's moving with a constant velocity. So the thing that we wanna do first is draw a dotted line around the system. In this case, the system is the weight sled because that's the thing that we're interested in. It's moving with a constant velocity. So there's our dotted line. And we also have this trick of drawing an X everywhere that something is touching the system, in this case, the weight sled. So here at the bottom, we see the weight sled is being touched by the floor. So I'm going to mark an X there to remind me that there's a contact force there. And there's also an X here because we have the woman pushing the weight sled. In step two, all we have to do is draw a dot to represent the system, which is the weight sled. All right, so the next step that we have to do is we're going to identify the forces acting on our system. And here, we wanna use our clues of the points of contact. So first up, we have a force pushing to the right. And if you're in honors, you'll see me refer to it as a normal force if there's a person pushing because one's palms do act as a surface. In regular, we call it F sub P, force done by a person. Here I'm gonna label it the normal force on sled by woman. And then we've also got a force of gravity on the sled because the sled does have mass. And that's done by the earth. And I'm kind of doing step three and four at the same time here. It's good to get into the habit of that, just doing it as you go along. We've got the normal force here, upwards, reminded, reminding ourselves here with this X that there's another normal force. This time it's due to the floor, so this one's on sled by the floor. Okay, and let's check to make sure it's moving at a constant velocity. So I know in the up and down direction, the sled's 
not moving at all in the vertical direction. So these probably balance out. However, currently, we do not have forces balancing out in the horizontal direction. So think of the constant velocity thing as a hint that there has to be a force pointing to the left. And this force does have to balance out with the force that the woman exerts pointing to the right. The force that points to the left would then have to be the force of kinetic friction. And this is on the sled. Also by the floor. Okay, so we're just going to quickly check our on by notation. And we know that we've done this right because every on has to be on something in our dotted line. In this case, our simple our system is pretty simple. It's just the sled. So every on is the sled and every by has to be by something outside of the dotted line. So here we've got the floor is outside of the dotted line. Again, the floor is outside the dotted line. Woman is outside of the dotted line. And the earth outs is outside of the dotted line. So we are good for all of these things. So here we have a complete force diagram for something moving at a constant velocity. Now, this is a skill that we're going to work on over the course of the unit, and it takes a lot of practice. But if we keep up on it, you should be good. Talk board class.